okay welcome back so this is my second video on physics heat so in the last video I explained to you about finding the specific heat capacity of a gas on physics practicals on heat so in this video I'll be talking about the Newton's law of cooling so Newton's law of cooling is another uh, actually a definition or a law that we get in heat so it's all about the convection currents so to begin with I'll explain the law and the equation the general equation that we are using on Newton's law of cooling so Newton's law of cooling is all about cooling of an object through the convection currents through the convection currents so Newton expressed his law of cooling as the rate of change of the temperature of an object now the rate of change of temperature now the change of temperature so if you take a small temperature change small temperature change you can say that the change of temperature is actually the derivative of the temperature and the rate of change of temperature is actually the derivative of the temperature with time so that will be d theta by dt is proportional to the difference between its own temperature so its own temperature means if you say you have a cup of tea right or some object uh, hot, hot coffee right so for a practical example that you will be using in day to day life so if we have the temperature of this object say the in the cup of tea or the cup of coffee right uh, the temperature is say 70 degrees of celsius right however the temperature of the surroundings surroundings or the temperature of the environment or the temperature of the system in which you are staying is say 30 degrees of celsius so you can measure that easily using a thermometer so the difference of temperature is 70 minus 30 which is 40 degrees of Celsius or 40 Kelvin. So Newton express his law of cooling as the temperature difference. The rate of ch change of temperature is proportional to this difference of the temperature, your own temperature and the temperature of the surroundings. Now when we express that in the concept of the cup of tea, what actually happens is that the rate of change of temperature or the time taken to cool this object is proportional to the difference of temperature of the object or the now in this case the cup of tea or cup of coffee and the temperature of the environment or the temperature of the system you or the object is lying so you can say that the rate of change of temperature is d theta by dt and it is proportional to the difference between the temperature of the own temperature and the temperature of surrounding so if i take the, the a certain temperature to be theta and the room or the ambient temperature or the temperature of the surroundings to be theta r so d theta by dt is proportional to theta minus theta r so as in the case of newton's second law and the other concept that we have been learning so far to remove the proportionality we equate it with a constant so the constant we use here is that d theta by dt is equal to e a theta minus theta r so e is a constant that depends upon the object a is the surface area so what we do here is that we can finally uh, build up a relationship between theta t e a and theta r right so that's all about the newton's law of cooling now let's go for a sample practical in which newton's law of cooling can be proved and used so this is the setup that i'll be using so you can find the specific heat capacity of a liquid by the method of cooling right so in this method I use the Newton's law of cooling to take the final readings so the apparatus used here is something like this you have two vessels the outer vessel and the inner vessel and these two vessels are supported by two heat insulators and filled with water I'll explain the reason as to why I took such a measurement and uh, such a setup and we have a calorimeter here with a stirrer and water here so what actually happens is that it is actually at uh, some temperature and we hang it with strings right so let's take the mass of the calorimeter to be m mass of water to be mw mass of the liquid to be ml the spe specific heat capacities of the calorimeter water and the liquid to be respectively c c w and cl and let's also assume that the times taken by water and the liquid to cool from an initial temperature of theta 1 to final temperature of theta 2 is respectively tw and tl then the median rate at which the calorimeter with water loses heat right is you know is equal to mc d theta by dt so d theta is actually equal to now theta 1 minus theta 2 
right so because in the difference of temperatures theta 1 minus theta 2 divide by because now you know that i in contrast to the case of finding the specific heat capacity of a solid when the, when we need to find the specific heat capacity of a liquid we have to use uh, we can use the newton's cool, uh, cooling law and also in the unlike in the case of finding the specific heat capacity of a solid now you know that it's all about not heating of an object and coming to a thermal equilibrium it's all about cooling of an object so the initial temperature will be greater than the final temperature so you have to subtract the final temperature from the initial temperature so the median rate at which the calorimeter of with water loses heat is equal to the mass of the calorimeter times its specific heat capacity which is c times the temperature difference over time so we are taking actually a uh, rate of change of heat right so and when you think about the water now calorimeter we have to take the calorimeter plus water system for water the mass of water is mw the specific heat capacity of water is cw and the rate of te change of temperature is theta 1 minus theta 2 over Tw. Similarly for the calorimeter with uh, calorimeter with uh, water with loses heat is equal to Mc plus Ml times Cl uh, times theta 1 minus theta 2 divided by Tl. So under identical situations we can assume that the median rates at which heat is lost by these two systems are equal so we i'll explain as to why we assume sir, like that right in the important point section of this video so when you think that when the median rates are equal you can say that m times c plus m w c w times theta 1 minus theta 2 over tw that is the median rate at which the calorimeter loses heat is equal to now mc times mlcl times theta 1 minus theta 2 times divide by tl so if we conduct an experiment by this equation we can find the specific heat capacity of the liquid uh, which is cl here so the experiment is as follows you can set up the apparatus as shown and you can fill the empty space of the outer vessel and the inner vessel with cold water you have to first of all measure the mass of the calorimeter and you have to pour water at most about 70 degrees of celsius this is the reason as to why when, when water when the temperature of water increases above or it goes above 70 degrees of Celsius actually vaporization takes place so that vapors will turn out right so we have to minimize that effect so we take the maximum temperature of the initial temperature of the system to be 70 degrees of Celsius and to be about one centimeter below the lid right so I explain that as well so then what we do is then hang the calorimeter with the two strings so that it is free in the air without any contact with the physical surface and stir the calorimeter until the temperature of water comes down to about 40 degrees of celsius and record the temperature at regular intervals so recording the temperature at regular intervals is important because we want to draw two graphs so we'll draw, draw two graphs in the next few minutes so we want to draw two graphs so recording the temperature at different times what i mean by regular intervals is at different time occasions is completely important right it's mandatory and at the fifth step what you do is you measure the mass of the calorimeter with water and also you can complete you can repeat this experiment for the uh, the other liquid so what you do is you remove the cold water between the two vessels and refill it with cold water so you had cold water and you completely remove it and refill it cold water and remove the water inside the calorimeter and repeat the experiment for the similar for a similar volume of the liquid and you also record the temperature at regular intervals so here are the two curves that i was talking about the cooling curves for the liquid and water you can see that the temperature of water decrease not linearly right not linearly but in a very exponential or actually in a curved manner right in a curved manner so you can say that the initial temperature of theta 1 of the temperature is like this you can mark like this and the temp times right times t1 and t2 so you can say that these are these, these are actually uh, using the readings from the equation we just got above we can find the specific heat capacity of the liquid right so you know that tw and tl right tw and tl 
so this is actually t2 is actually t w and t1 is actually t l so we can find now you know t w t l masses of water and the liquid theta theta 1 and theta 2 and what you are remaining with is the specific heat capacity of the liquid and you can find that using the equation so here are some important points as i have been talking about on the videos on the all almost all of the video my videos on physics practicals here are some important points in this experiment now first of all the calorimeter should be hung between the two vessels because during the experiment the environmental conditions can change for example let me say that uh, you can assume or you can consider that the initial temperature of the system to be somewhat say uh, 60 degrees uh, say no not 60 uh, I'll take 25 degrees of Celsius but after you terminate the ex ex uh, experiment the temperature the so temperature of the surrounding may not be so it may be increased or decreased so you can't help with that so what you do is that you to remain to minimize that uh, hassle or to minimize the problems or the errors that can occur with these environmental conditions you don't keep the calorimeter in not in contact but hanging between two vessels now consider that there's no actually heat loss by conduction so that is not the reason as to why we hang the calorimeter between the two objects because there's no conduction because there's no heat increase or heat flow there's actually heat decrease or cooling or convection so the flow of convection currents around the calorimeter hence the flow of convection currents around the calorimeter might change with the change of temperature so we hang it between the two vessels so another important point of this experiment is that uh, the when similar volumes of the liquid and water are used for the experiment the temperature variation across the surface of the calorimeter at a certain temperature is identical all right so actually the density of the liquid and water may change but the temperature distribution temperature distribution along across the surface of the calorimeter should be identical because although water and the liquid are two types of liquids and they have different chemical properties and they have different physical properties what i mean is when you are taking the volume the temperature distribution across the same volume should be identical so that's the reason as to why we take similar volumes of the liquid and water sometimes when the volumes are different although the inside of the calorimeter might have the same temperature the temperature distribution across the outer surface might be different so that's the reason as to why we take it so one of the another, another important steps is that when the calorimeter is stirred the temperature is equal distributed so we have to stir it so that's the reason as to why we you normally use a stirrer in the case of physics practicals on heat to get uh, actually the uh, equal distribution of heat across all parts so the temperature absorbed by convection current is the same regardless of the place exposed so you if you expose you can't uh, you don't have to consider whether the place exposed is the bottom of the calorimeter or top, top of the calorimeter or a surface uh, an outer surface uh, so regardless of the place the convection currents will be the same when it is stirred because the actually inside the calorimeter the temperature distribution will be equal when it is stirred so when the calorimeter is closed at the top by a lid the heat loss due to convection and vaporization is minimized now we want to now this is actually an experiment that we use in convection now newton's law of cooling is all about convection so what we do in convection is that we want to minimize the current convection currents that can happen now in the case of this experiment you can see that so, yeah now convection current as i explained convection current may come like this and go like this right convection currents like this so convection currents go like this so it's like wind right wind we can't stop wind so by closing it with the lid the contact of the contact of the convection currents with water is completely hampered so what actually happens is that when it is closed convection currents may not cool down the surface of the um, surface of the water so there will be no errors or inaccuracies in the uh, final temperature that you are taking with the thermometer you can the mass will not change for a long while but the temperature may change when convection currents meet up with the water and the fifth step, fifth important point is for both occasions 
I for the word experiment of water and liquid the same calorimeter should be used now that's also one of the uh, most important steps when you use different calorimeters you may use identical calorimeters in which the volume is the same you may use calorimeters with the same metal or with the same length and all the dimensions physical and the chemical properties but what actually happens is that the nature of the servers may change now there may be errors there may be errors in the, these two calorimeters that you can see with your naked eye right nature of the surface is important so that's the reason as to why we take a constant e right so nature of the surface is important but if you use the same calorimeter the nature of the surface may not change with this precedence of the first experiment and going to the second experiment it's a very minute change you can ignore that however if you if you if you, although you use two identical calorimeters the nature of this surface may change that the radius of the practical and has the expected value for the specific heat of the gas may change and it's also better if the calorimeter and the stir are made of the same material so that's actually an optional argument so that's not mandatory so in this video i explained to you about the newton's law of cooling so this is the second video on the physics practical that i have been explaining to you so in the first video i explained to you about finding the specific heat capacity of a gas so in this video i explained to you i introduce you about the newton's law of cooling as to how Newton's law of cooling plays an important role in finding convection currents and I designed a simple experiment we actually uh, not I designed I explained to you about a simple experiment in which Newton's law of cooling and convection currents play a key role in finding the specific heat capacity of a liquid by the method of cooling so in the next video I'll be going to more detailed topics of heat including conduction and more detailed topics of convection so thanks for watching this video and see you then.